Welcome to Life by Abe. This is Abe and Kirsten. Hi there. Uh, today we're going to do an interview talking about his experiences of moving overseas. He's living here in Ho Chi Minh City and uh, we're going to ask some questions. Do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, if you're going to find it interesting, hit that like button. If you want to see more, drop a comment and tell me what questions do you want me to ask people. All right, Curtis, how, yeah. how you doing? I'm good yourself. Good, good, good. Thanks. One, number one, thanks for coming on. Yeah, anytime. And uh, two, um, let's just get right into it. I want you to give us kind of a brief history of your time living abroad. How long have you been abroad and where have you been and like, how did you get here? All right, well, um, it's, it's not extremely interesting, but um, I started at quite a, an, old, or an older age. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'd say that I think I came here in 2019, so four years ago. So I've been in Ho Chi Minh, it was on the 10th of June, four years, exactly. Okay. Um, and, you know, not going to lie, it's, it's been a it's been topsy-turvy four years, obviously, with COVID involved. I mean, all countries experienced their difficulties. Um, I must say, here in Ho Chi Minh City, we were very guarded, so it was, it was actually um, not as, as, as painful as, as other countries experienced it. But I must say, um, in the beginning, I was actually supposed to go to Dubai because okay. uh, my, my actual degree is uh, hospitality and tourism. Mm -hmm. So I've been in the kitchen, I've been in the restaurant industry for 10 years. And um, I had my, my planes and flight tickets booked, and then uh, I had a bit of a uh, laugh happened, and then I had to retract that and I had to stay back at home. So it furthered uh, again, like another year or two, I had to extend, um, you know, leaving South Africa. And the main reason was is because, I mean, anyone out there that, that comes from South Africa knows that it's quite dangerous. You don't make a lot of money, uh, no matter what your degree is. <clears throat> it's quite a struggle. So. The main idea for, for myself moving over was just to find a better life. Um, and as a teacher, believe it or not, um, we make pretty decent money. Mm. And we live a comfortable life, a safe life. Um, so my four years, even if I've had some, some ups and like, mo mostly downs, I must say that looking on the brighter side of things, uh, Ho Chi Minh City has taught me a lot of valuable lessons. Um, and I guess that's like in the whole um, aspect of things, just moving abroad mm. from any other country. And, and for us, uh, South Africa is a third world country. Mm -hmm. um, so moving to, to Ho Chi Minh City wasn't much of a change for us. Okay. So I didn't really get a culture shock. A lot of people like, watch out for the culture shock. Um, you know, they spit in the streets, and this happens, and that happens, and you'll see some weird things happen. And, and I promise you, we, we've seen it all in South Africa as well. So it wasn't much of a, <coughs> a, much of a, 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 a shock. So it was actually quite a, an easy um, sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like transition. Transition, that's the one. There. Um, coming from a really small town as well, and it was the first time I've ever traveled abroad. Okay. So the first time ever on an international flight. Um, and I must say that it was an, an amazing um, experience that many people should, should uh, definitely um look at, you know, it doesn't have to just be Ho Chi Minh City, it can be all over the place, um, whether it be teaching English or doing whatever job you have, uh, definitely travel and meet people. The culture, for me, um, I'm very, like, um, what's the word, uh, fussy when it comes to food, okay. so I usually just eat a specific, but since I've been here, I actually tried pho for the first time. Oh, really? In four years. Like the, like the other day, literally, really? literally wow. the other day. Oh, okay. And it blew my mind. Yeah. Like, I know that there's a process that goes into it. I mean, I, I always watch Uncle Roger, I love him. And I've, I've seen the process that it goes into making it. And the thing is, you know, the difference in cultural foods, like Asian and uh, Brazilian, etc., etc., like, it's the process. Um, and it's, it's how much time it takes and it's, it's you know, it's the 70 year old grandmother in the kitchen making making this like broth for like three days mm. and all of that goes into your mouth and when you think of it, it's, it's actually quite a, it's a beautiful feeling and, and I wish I would experienced this earlier because it took me four years to eat it. Well, so. you're talking to the right guy, <laughs> one, uh, so if pho was your, your first, yeah. there are many more levels okay, above, levels. above it. In my opinion, I've had the uh, bun chat mm -hmm. and um, bun cha. Okay, and, yeah, and that's about it. Yeah. Okay, don't and, worry. We'll, we'll, we'll all right. Fantastic. I'll, I'll, I'll point you in some directions. We'll go to some places. Awesome. Um, I have, yeah, like I said, I haven't really 
experienced Ho Chi Minh to its fullest. I haven't really, I haven't been to all the little islands, um, <clears throat> just focusing on work at the moment, but there is such a um, vast area for, for youngsters and even people that are, are a little bit older that, that want to change your life mm-hmm. and want to come to, as I said, not necessarily Ho Chi Minh City. It can be Thailand, it could be, you know, uh, Ecuador, wherever, if you want to go teach English. Just to get out of your comfort zone, and for me, it's it's, it's and I mean I'm, I'm I'm 35 now, so you know I'm getting I'm getting long in the tooth, mm-hmm. and uh, every day I realize that I still learn things like new things. Okay. Um, and that's that's the beauty of being in different countries. Yeah, you um, you get the different experiences, you get to see different things. So yeah, yeah that's absolutely fantastic, and like yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, there's there's obviously a lot of other things um, within Vietnam to sort of. I won't say watch out for, but any other country. For example, if, if I go to America, the chances of, of my card being uh, cloned and my bank card being drained is, is quite high. Mm-hmm. You come here, the chances of you being in a, in a motorbike accident are quite high. Mm-hmm. So um, each country has its, 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 its ups and downs, but I must say that like, for the first country that I've lived in, um, I would definitely recommend, recommend it to many, many, many people that just need a safe haven and to live a comfortable life. Um, and yeah, as I said, uh, I take more of the good um, thoughts and, the, and positivity from, from Ho Chi Minh and I'll probably be here for a couple more years until I move on to the next, okay. next country hopefully. Okay, well that's that's fantastic. I'm glad that you're, one, you're happy here, you feel safe, yeah. you feel comfortable. And you're stepping outside of that comfort zone that you said with trying new food. So yeah. that's good. That, t- that took a while, that took a while. So, so I'm getting, well, I'm getting wh- there. One, why do you think that took a while? Um, so firstly, um, at that particular stage, I was uh, obviously on like a, a big gym uh, thing. So I was just eating chicken, rice, vegetables. Mm. And then also like uh, so many of my friends said to me, but fur literally has chicken. It's got all the goodness. It's got bone broth. It's got it's really good for you. Mm. And I think um, mentally, because I've been at home and I'm used to my my South African food, mm. um, I became stubborn. And I was like, no, sorry, I won't eat. I won't eat street food that's dirty. Mm. Meanwhile, uh, the streets that will, when they cook, it's actually cleaner than your your own kitchen is. Yeah. Um, and it took me probably about six months also to try the like street food. It took me a while. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. like, uh, if there are people out there that, that are similar to me, like I would definitely suggest just jumping into it because at the end of the day, um, the flavors here, like I mean, Asia is, is, is well known for their flavors, and it's just yeah, some of the stuff that I and I haven't even experienced a percentage of it. So okay. I'm really looking forward to to to, to delving into some uh, cultural foods and just, um, yeah, experiencing Vietnam a little bit more. Okay, okay, interesting. I'm, I'm glad that you're you're able to do that. And uh, thank you for telling us your 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 story of like how you moved abroad and everything, that was it. So, you touched a little bit about like, you're not feeling safe at home and you want to get out and make money. But were there any other motivations that you had when you were making that that plan to leave and move abroad? Yeah, I think um, traveling was one of them. Because <laughs> uh, also, once we had looked at everything, uh, or myself had looked at uh, Dubai, Dubai is extremely expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, um, I've got lots of friends and family that live there, and it, it's not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you do have a decent job and you are able to do like a year's worth of debt because you have to pay like literally like your housing and your car you pay up in front mm. and then if you don't have the money the bank said don't worry we'll give you however much because mm. the more debt you have the happier they are yeah so once i figured that out i was like oh okay maybe maybe dubai is not a great idea so i came to a country that cost of living is cheaper um and safe i say safe in the sense of in South Africa, unfortunately, it is very dangerous mm-hmm. uh, with regards to no matter what color of your skin is, it is just at that stage where our country is so depleted and so corrupt that you are not safe. Mm-hmm. You cannot walk out of your yard at any particular time. Uh, you're always looking over your shoulder. Um, and if you've got a female in your life or if you've got any like, you know, mother or sister or friends traveling with you that are females, and you're in South Africa, you are always on edge. Here in Vietnam, as soon as I landed, 
I went for a walk at like one o'clock in the morning mm. and I thought to myself, this is absolute bliss. Like, no one's bothered me. I'm so safe. Mm. I don't even feel like looking over my shoulder and it was my first time that I arrived. So um, having that, that feeling of, of, of safety, being able to travel anywhere, to jump on a random person's bike, grab, yeah, grab. and just go to who knows where down these little alleyways and like, um, it's quite daunting, but at the same time, uh, very adventurous. Mm. So, <clears throat> um, to answer your question, it was a lot of it had to do with safety, a lot of it had to do with money as well. Because okay. um, in South Africa, compared to what we get here, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, I can't even fathom the, the, the differences between the amounts of cash that you get. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can't save any money in South Africa either. Yeah. Uh, you know, costs of living is very expensive. <clears throat> Petrol is ridiculous. And um, it was just me wanting to save money, wanting to travel. Uh, and Vietnam just seemed like one of the most um, sort of uh, recreational, or easiest uh, countries to do that. Because you've got Halong Bay, and then you have you know, Phu Quoc, and you have Nha Trang, and you have all these beautiful little beaches that are untouched mm -hmm. that everyone goes to and, and, and sort of like goes and visits. So that's, that's eventually my goal. I haven't had time to travel, mm -hmm. but uh, once I do, I definitely will delve a little bit more into... So that, that was the, the, the whole sort of um, uh, thinking behind the whole thing. Okay, okay. That's, 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 that's good. And, you know, it's, uh, it is like getting out of your your situation sure. feeling safe that's super big yeah. and that 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 stress actually ages you faster than than oh, don't anything even talk else about it. i think i've got a whole bunch of grades because of that <laughs> but um yeah just uh it's a, it's a complicated different feeling um okay. i would never be able to have what i have living in my own apartment uh, my own bike or my own transport mm -hmm. <clears throat> um living from paycheck to paycheck but still being able to have some left mm -hmm. like that's never been a thing for me so um having that peace of mind is, is, is really is, is just a uh, it's unexplainable um it just makes you happy and life is stressful as it is so um yeah depending on, on what countries and stuff that you pick uh i would definitely start off with vietnam because it is definitely the, the easiest and the cheapest to, 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 to live Okay, okay. Yeah, interesting, interesting. And then um, let's go back to uh, like your experience, your four years of living here. All right. Uh, is there one, if you could do it over again, is there anything that you would change? Is there anything that you would do differently? Yeah, so I think um, I would plan it a lot better. Okay. Because uh, it was very rushed. Um, I, I sort of spoke to a friend for a couple of days didn't really do much research, came with a whole bunch of winter clothes, um, silly things like that, you know, like where, where, where you like, you get to this tropic country, there's like 110 humidity and 40 degrees all the time. Mm. Um, that would definitely be one and um, maybe just become, come a little bit more prepared Okay. in the sense of um, <clears throat> be aware of, of other people's cultures and Obviously, coming from South Africa, we have a whole bunch of different um, colors, skin, and uh, languages, and all of that as well. So we do understand the culture, but a lot of people um, sometimes get annoyed with certain things that other people do, mm -hmm. and um, they, they they lash out. Or as a Westerner, we're very impatient. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very um, inconsistent in that way, where you know one day we'll be happy and we'll wave, and the next day we won't. So. Um, if I could change something like right in the beginning, I would um, definitely be more friendly. Okay. Because um, for some reason, you know, I was happy being here, but I was also very, very frustrated because I didn't understand. Obviously, the language barrier is, is, is a big thing. Um, that's probably something that I would have done then as well. Just learned the very basic stuff like hello, goodbye, mm. thank you, those kinds of things. Like in Vietnamese? Um, yeah, in Vietnamese. Okay. Because the thing is like, if you go to any country, and I, I mean, I would do this if I was going to Spain for six months or a year, let's say, um, I would definitely learn the basic structure, uh, structure of the language because it's so much easier to get by, mm -hmm. uh, the people are more friendlier to you as mm -hmm. soon as you can speak the language, and as soon as it, there's, a, there's not that, like, that massive barrier, because then you get your backup and they get their backup, and then at the end of the day, like, no one really wins. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
I would definitely come with, I mean, I came with an open mind because like I said, there was no culture shock. Um, but things like not getting angry uh, when their indicators stay on for five hours and they don't turn left. Um, and just like there's no road rules. Um, just like silly little things that, that shouldn't irritate me. Mm. I did. Mm. But now that I've been here for so long, like I don't even, it doesn't even bother me anymore. So, so actually, you know, not, I don't want to correct you, but yeah, yeah. that's actually culture shock. The, the irritation, okay, so, that right, frustration right. is, yeah. so there's like five stages, and that's, sure. one, of the, that's one of the stages okay. where anything that you found cute or cool right. in the beginning, yeah. and then like later on, you're just like, ah, ah, ah. Well, one of my peeves is when, um, and I mean, it could be anyone, it could be Westerners or whatever, if they're driving together on the highway and, and talking. They're speaking to each other, I want to do my head in. Like, it's literally... <laughs> But, I mean, other than that, um, yeah, you really learn how to be a good driver here. You mm. learn how to be patient. Mm. Um, and just things that would really annoy you back at home. Like, I become, and I was a very, very impatient human being, and I've become a lot more patient. Mm. Um, I'll let people push in, and I'll let, even though I'll still correct them, just be like, hey, you know, next time be in the line kind of thing. They probably don't speak English, so it's mm. fine. But, I mean, there's, there's no use in, 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 in getting annoyed with that human because... They don't know better because that's just. It's yeah. It's, how Vietnamese culture are. They let, they let them do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's um, fam, very family oriented, and and also what what I do love about Vietnam is that um, all like the older generation are really well looked after. Mm. They respect the older generation so much, and that's something that uh, I wish that we had in South Africa because we don't. Yeah. Our young our young generation doesn't care about the, the older generation. Which is is, is is one thing that I've learned in the last year or two that they are very very respectful. Yeah, yeah, they. Uh, which is, they, is quite a good thing to learn from. And and the family is number one mm. over everything. So like, which is yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. Which means that if you have children here, that you're going to be looked after yeah. if you raise your children like that, uh, and the society's then going to pressure them to also follow okay. the the rules yeah. and everything. So right. yeah, yeah, excellent. So. You know, you kind of talked a little bit about some of the things that you learned, and you're talking about being more patient. Uh, are there any other lessons that you learned while living abroad? I think um, also, obviously, every culture has a different way of thinking. So whether it be um, on how they conduct business or how they have a conversation <clears throat> or anything like that, like um, here, uh, it's it's very much. They are, I don't know how to say this without uh, sounding rash, um, they try not to hurt people's feelings. Mm -hmm. So like when it comes to business, like they'll sort of try and soften the blow instead of just being straightforward and being like, listen, this is how it is, this is what happened, or you know, you're fired, or whatever the case is. I think um, they don't like confrontation. So that's one thing that I've, that I've noticed. Um, Compared to, again, I mean, I'm comparing, but like in South Africa, uh, we're very like, forward. If something happens, we go straight to that person and it's just, we hash it out. Here, um, it's a little bit different. Mm. Um, and I've learned how to uh, control that because obviously when I was working at a center for English, um, I used to have a lot of uh, altercations. And it was, a lot of it was language barrier, but a lot of it was my body language. So I would always come off very sort of, uh, animal, not animalistic, but like sort of I'm um, the, the alpha male. Mm. And um, they, uh, you know, they would get very sort of intimidated. And then um, I wouldn't get exactly all the answer that I was looking for. And there was just a lot of frustration. So I've learned how to um, understand that English is not their first language and that they are trying. Mm. I don't know their language and I've been here for four years. Mm. I, I consider that quite rude because their language is extremely difficult to learn. Um, so I've just, I've just learned a lot of appreciation um, from, from just um, being around their culture and, and uh, just noticing little things like, for example, they're very, very festive. They like to go out after, I mean, even after work sometimes, and they work extremely hard. Mm. Vietnamese, and I feel really bad for them sometimes, like I don't think they have a chill. Like Monday to Sunday, 16 hours a day, mm. and then it's family, and then it's sleep for two hours, and then you're up again, and it just, it's, it's amazing to actually witness how hard working they are. Um, and, and I've taken, I've sort of taken that in and, and uh, 
realize that why am I complaining about my 18 hour a week uh, schedule when uh, some of the people are working like 60, 70 hours a week. So um, there's a lot of things to be thankful for once you, you sort of look at it from another angle. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And I mean, that's a, that is a, I think no matter where we go, coming yeah. from, you know, I'm coming from the U.S. Sure. Anywhere I'm going, it's you're learning something, you're getting to see yeah. something, and while you have those frustrations, you also, in the back of your mind, if you understand that it's not the same, common sense is not common. Exactly. Uh, common like sense, that. yeah, yeah. Right. common sense comes from from your experiences in sure. your environment, exactly. and that's what makes sense to you. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's going to make sense for someone coming in. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think it's also. I won't, I won't call it ignorance, but it's also, I felt quite ignorant in the beginning because, um, again, there were a lot of things that, that um, I didn't know about the country. <laughs> and I was like, I'm living here for four years already and I don't know these things. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt quite ashamed. So it is, when you're living in someone else's country as a visitor or a foreigner, mm -hmm. like, definitely try your best to get stuck into their culture because I promise you now you'll be surrounded by so many people because... Uh, they enjoy it when you try. Yeah. Um, and then you, you, you just get like in, invited into this community and it's, it's quite welcoming. And especially if you're alone mm -hmm. and you're here for a couple of weeks, if you do that, I promise you, like, you'll, you'll, you'll feel at home straight away. Okay. It's yeah. It's very helpful. That is, that is. I want to touch a little bit on your experience here, something that I've experienced. Okay. Uh, when you were doing something for your first time, yeah. uh, for your, like your first week, first month, sure. and then all of a sudden, someone's laughing at you, like straight in your face laughing at you. How did that make you feel? Um, was, that, was that like, because I've, I've had that happen to me before when I try to speak Vietnamese, mm. um, and I think it was the first three or four weeks, so obviously trying to learn the tones and the, the up and the down and, and all of that, and, um, and that's why I refuse to speak Vietnamese now because I felt so embarrassed. It was in front of quite a lot of older women. Mm. So they must have been about 40 or 50 years old. And um, I said, come on, and kaplai, which I then thought, you know, thank you, goodbye, or see you again. See, see you later, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I obviously didn't say it correctly. Mm. And they all just had a massive cackle. And I was just standing there going, and I felt so embarrassed. Mm. Um, and I mean, I wasn't angry at them because I know that back at home when when our Afrikaans speaking people sometimes try and speak English, they have quite a quite an accent, mm -hmm. and sometimes we would make fun of them. But at the end of the day, uh, it made me realize and it took me back to that point in life where I was like, but "That's not cool, though. Like someone's trying mm -hmm. to learn your language, and then you're being laughed at." But um, I think they, because I was trying, they were more laughing like with me and not at me. Mm -hmm. But at that particular moment, I felt like they were. Yeah. Um, and ever since then, like I hardly speak Vietnamese. So I haven't even tried like learning more mm. more of the language because I was just like, if that's going to be the outcome every time. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, it makes you feel. But yeah, bad. it makes me feel insecure. So, so <laughs> I've learned uh, that whenever there's a mistake or something like that, sure. the the general here in Vietnam is to laugh. All right. And it, seems like they're laughing at you okay. but they're just laughing at the situation all right and they're like yeah this is fun and i i've even had some random stranger on the street like yeah. pointing at me and laughing i've learned to for me personally like that was one of my big things was just like brush it off yeah, yeah. laugh with them you have right. a good laugh at them you try again oh, that's good that's good the, to, that's good to know because yeah. i had a i had a concept that it was that but i also wasn't too sure yeah it hasn't happened to me too many times so it happens to me quite a lot because okay. i'm i'm trying but i also right. now uh for me i'm kind of goofy i go in with the whole purpose of i'm speaking vietnamese and if i get a laugh out of them <laughs> Yeah, Fantastic. like, like well, it's, I, I'm, I'm happy, like, because, okay. you know, changing the mood, because it could be sometimes super serious, yeah. and then you're just, like, coming and you say this, and they're like, what? I don't understand. That's the funniest <laughs> thing I've heard all day, and, like... Uh, right. I've got a friend of mine, um, and she, she speaks pretty decently, because she's in a couple of classes, and it, it gets her very far mm. in, in, in a lot of things, and it helps out in a lot of sticky situations, so... Uh, yeah, it's definitely, um, it's extremely hard to learn, yeah. as you know, um, but yeah, if people are wanting to come over the side, if they've got some spare cash, definitely do some lessons. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, um, I'm also, like, I'm studying at the moment, okay. but I'm also, like, 
looking to take lessons shortly. Oh, I see. Right. Uh, I want to do kind of a condensed course okay. uh, and just like let's go, let's go, let's go. Right. So we'll we'll see. Okay. Cool, cool. That's good. So uh, now we'll move on. We talked about like the lessons. Okay. And you you briefly before you talked that you had some good experiences and some bad experiences and, and, and you're changing the way that you're thinking. Yeah. What are some of the pros and cons that you see of living overseas? Um, first of all, experience. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter how old you are, you're always going to learn something new. Okay, so that's like a pro. Yes, yeah, so okay. that, that would be a pro. So we can break it, I'll, I'll break it up into pros first. I think um, if I can think off the top of my head, um, this is the healthiest I've, I've ever been. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the happiest I've been in a long time as well. Um, I love the fact that there's no winter here. Okay. I really do. That's a pro for me. 100% a pro. So, like, you won't find me in Canada or anywhere else. I'm, I'm not going there. Um, and, again, uh, I never thought I was going to be a person that wanted to travel because coming from a family that we were never really um, able to go on holidays and things like that, so it just wasn't a thing. Hmm. So I had to stay in the backyard and try and, you know, make my own adventures and keep myself busy. So um, I wasn't really bothered about traveling, but seeing the beauty that's out there and, and the people that you can meet and experiences that you can have, uh, that would be a, a, uh, another pro as well. Um, the different different cultures that I've met, American, Brazilian, uh, you name it. And um, being more interested in other people's cultures, and asking them questions. I mean, I never, I never gave one, you know, and uh, now I actually do. I do. Uh, care about you know if I meet a Russian person you know ask them a few questions about what's happening up in the world or Ukrainian or whatever the case is because there's again there is a massive uh, melting pot of, of, of people here from all different sides of the world mm. and for me that's that's a pro because it's uh, it's almost taken me out of my social anxiety mm. uh, because I do enjoy meeting different people from different countries and just you know hearing they they are. Uh, great stories or their bad stories or, or whatever the case or where they came from. So off the top of my head I would say that um, the ability here for at the moment to save money, mm -hmm. the cost of living is definitely a pro. Um, getting around from place to place, especially if you stay where we are now, mm -hmm. the, the expat the expat area, um, everything is literally you can walk from multiple places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You don't even need a bike. Um, and safety. Safety is definitely one of my main priorities and I'd say that's a massive pro. Cons, um, I'd like to say obviously the language barrier um, and also like the traffic okay. sometimes gets to me but like I mean traffic is all over the world but uh, having to go around a, like any specific circle mm -hmm. in Vietnam is, is a nightmare to anyone. And if you've been driving, I'm sure for a couple of years, um, I still get the jitters when I go around certain because again, there's no right of way, there's no. Um, so a con for me would be the roads are quite dangerous, and uh, recently being in an accident, it's made me very weary. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just like a warning to anyone that comes here, just take it easy. Uh, don't go and get yourself a 650 and think that you can uh, mm -hmm. cruise up and down the roads yeah. without anything happening. Um, I mean, there's probably, there's probably one or two other cons, uh, but at the moment, off the top of my head, I probably couldn't. Um, the karaoke uh, yeah. is something that drives me up the wall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, maybe the empathy side of things, like, uh, for example, if you're living in a, in a apartment block, uh, and I mean, this, this happens all over the world, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm not just pinpointing certain people. But like, uh, it seems to me that certain people just don't really have, um, what's the word, like, uh, they don't really think about other people that live around them or underneath them, or, you know what I mean, like, um, for me, that, that's, that's been quite a, because we live in such a built up area, I mean, this is probably the first time I've lived in apartments, I was used to live in like three standing houses. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, so I'm having neighbors so yeah, close. So that's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's something that I'll probably have to get used to, and that's probably just one of my peaks. I wouldn't say it's exactly a con, but, um, yeah, there'll be a lot of loudness and a lot of karaoke and uh, so that's where the patient thing comes in because um, uh, most Vietnamese people don't complain, mm. they do not, no matter how much noise they'll be making, they'll just let it go yeah. and then Westerners come in and like it'll be 11 o'clock and will be making noise and you're knocking on the door and being a parent, so yeah. 
Um, I, I would say that's it's sort of a con, but like it's, it's something that I've just become used to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, after your first six months here, you kind of just become accustomed yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, I think uh, it's, it's, it almost becomes normalized. Mm. Like for example, the first time I saw um, someone literally driving and just spitting. Yeah. Um, I was flummoxed because even in South Africa that doesn't you don't see that often. Mm. And uh, or for example, what is the other one that I saw with the who? Oh, it's like just get off your bike and just relieve yourself anyway, kind of thing. Um, you obviously don't see that in first world countries a lot because that, that would be a fine or would be a a rat. Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. much. So um, for that, that's you know that's they part for you in doing that, and that doesn't bother me. It's it's, it's uh, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Mm. I think. Um, <laughs> And uh, the thing is, that they don't have like public ablutions and, and places that have toilets anywhere. So, you know, it is a bit difficult. But other than that, um, probably another con would be some of the smells that, that you would find in, in Sabah. Okay. Uh, whether it comes from the river or whether it comes from certain things being dead, like I've smelled some funky smells. Mm. Um, but then at the same also, time, at the same time, you drive by a barbecue spot, you're like, oh, that smells so good. Exactly, and it'll be the same smell mixed in the barbecue. So um, I've also become accustomed to that. Sometimes some of the smells are okay. It stinks, but it, you know, it doesn't even bother me anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, and coming, we're living in a city now. You're coming from a, like you were saying, a small town yeah. with probably super fresh air all the time. And yeah. So yeah. the pollution, the pollution, and that could also obviously then also now that you reminded me would probably be also quite a con because you know um, you open up your balcony and you get this waft of like just heat. So you've got your aircon on all the time. Um, and I constantly, like, constantly got like a little tickle and stuff like that from from that because you're in and out the heat and the cold and heat and the cold. Um, so that would probably be. I mean, if you, if you have a, a weak immune system, you're going to get sick quite a bit in the beginning. Mm. But once you get used to the pollution and you're wearing your mask and you're doing the right safety precautions, you should be fine. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. absolutely. All right. So you talked about pros and cons. You want us to uh, go in, and I want you to tell me like a story of like the most amazing thing that's happened to you. So it's the most if you can think back to the last four years, what's the most amazing thing that's happened to you? I think there's quite a there's quite a few of them. Uh, the first time I went to Cambodia was was, was quite uh, quite amazing because again first time being uh, international. Also when we um, on our way from South Africa, we stopped off in Singapore. Okay. So at the, the, the famous Singapore... Uh, the Chang, Changi Airport. That one, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, they have this butterfly park and have this waterfall. And like, I literally felt like I was in Jurassic Park. Mm. Um, and it was absolutely amazing. And then we obviously landed uh, in Ho Chi Minh. We had to get all our papers sorted. And then moved off to Cambodia for a few days to, to do our visa or our TRC, I think it was. Mm. And the temples and the, the nightlife and that completely different to Ho Chi Minh City, but yet also very similar. Um, so for me, that was that was very enjoyable. I haven't traveled anywhere else, unfortunately. I've been to Vung Tao, which is it's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's a nice escape from if you just want a little bit of beach. Um, but if I had to if I had to pinpoint amazing uh, something amazing that happened, it would be teacher oriented. Okay. Um, I'm not going to mention the the name of the school, mm -hmm. but um, there were a few kids that um, were slightly challenged, if I can say it like that. And um, as you know, here it's not really something that they. It's not. Um, it's not brought. It's not brought. Attention is not brought to. Yeah. yeah. So um, we had to sort of navigate that on our own. And um, after about eight months working with, uh, I remember her name. I think her name was Bella. So I was in the kindergarten for this one. And um, I mean, the kids here are absolutely adorable. And you know, teaching was never on my radar, but. Now that I've been doing it for four odd years, um, it's something that's become a passion and, and it's something that's taught me how to reach my goals because I've always procrastinated. And after eight months, um, Bella, she couldn't, uh, I think she was four or five, mm -hmm. she couldn't cut, she couldn't uh, draw, she couldn't write, she couldn't read, she couldn't speak English. And after eight months of me just consistently like putting her in a corner because she, she had like weird tics and weird, so it must have been some form of Tourette's, mm -hmm. I may say that. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor, so I can't diagnose. But anyway, so after a while, her tics stopped. Um, 
it took her about four months for her to hug me. Mm. Um, and then another additional four months for her to start actually raising her hand and starting to speak. And on that day, I'll never forget it, uh, she said, I love you, teacher. And she'd never ever spoken English to me before. Mm. And she gave me this big hug. And as silly as it sounds, like I teared up because for me that was an amazing moment that I'd experienced in another country, um, not specialized in a specific field. Mm -hmm. And um, this little girl was, was very attached to me and I've made a difference. And I think that's something that's, I mean, there's probably a, a, a lot more that I can think of. Um, another one is uh, when your petrol runs out on your bike, mm -hmm. you'll just randomly get a Vietnamese foot that will just come out of nowhere mm -hmm. and you'll just hold on. And that's what happened to me. Like I had no clue what the hell was going on. Mm -hmm. Excuse my language. And um, all of a sudden I just started getting pushed and I didn't know what to do and I was just going and, and he was just kept on doing this and he took me to a petrol station. And I didn't have money on me, so he paid for the petrol as well. And then I was like, uh, can I get your number? And like, he's like, oh, no, he was so friendly. He didn't speak a word of English. And that little um, brief uh, act of kindness was like mind-blowing. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even think that, that you would find that anywhere else. Mm. Um, so that for me is, is probably what stands out as well. Okay. And again, there's probably a lot more, but um, if I had to think of, of, of two really... The ones that really like sort of show would be those two. Yeah. All right, excellent, excellent. Now, you can't have good without bad. Mm -hmm. So now let's go into the worst experiences that you've had living abroad. Um, I have to think about this one, but I think in the beginning, the first three months was the most difficult because trying to get your papers, uh, trying to get your TRC is a absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, life is made be quite difficult when you're a, a foreigner. Um, I don't think it's done on purpose, it's just the way the governments run because they change their rules and their regulations like every day. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just uh, the trip going to these departments and having to get these things signed and stamped and trying to figure out what's going on and translating this and that, like it can be an absolute shit. Um, and that's happened to me a few times. I would have to say every time I have to renew my visa, mm -hmm. Um, I get like absolute PTSD because like I go to Cambodia and then the last my last trip there was so much miscommunication and there was so much uh, language barrier that um, I was sent to the wrong station in Cambodia oh. and then I had to come straight back and then they wouldn't allow me through and then they stamped me but then they gave me a one month Cambodian visa but I got back into Vietnam but I only had a one exit visa. Mm -hmm. so I'd already used my one exit visa, but somehow they let me back into the country. And I was like, how am I here legally? And then I went to uh, the people that I was working for at that stage, and I showed them, and they were like, uh, they had no clue, but somehow they fixed it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd have to say that, and then also get a license, because you don't want to get caught by the police here. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously be as legal as possible, because uh, that's that's happened to me as well, and it's, it's yeah, it's a very it's expensive. It's expensive, and it's uh, it's just it's also very nerve wracking because again, they don't speak English. Uh, they might be a little bit grumpy towards you or aggressive towards you, and it's it's a very sensitive sort of uh, situation that you have to deal with. Yeah, unless you have uh, some blue notes in your in your wallet, then you should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> And then, um, but then that, that depends on timing as well. Like, yeah, yeah. No, that's I'm, true. But I, I must say I haven't I haven't had any altercations with any uh, any people from here, um, or been attacked in any way, or been looked down upon, or in any way um, been made to feel like I don't belong here. Mm. So that's that's something that's also been a, a, something that's been quite comfortable. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's like you're you're not pushed out. You're not yeah. not yeah. wanted. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. So, excuse me. Um, we talked a little bit about you know many different things and talked about your pros, your cons, your your good, your bad, your 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 stories. Uh, if you were to someone like a friend or a family member were to contact you and say, Hey, Kirsten, I think I want to move overseas. How would you advise them? What would be like your your number one piece of advice followed by two and three? Um, so the first piece of advice, uh, according this is purely according to me because uh, I'm extremely ADHD. Mm -hmm. So I tend, 
I tend to do things very backwards. Mm -hmm. So if you are planning a trip or if you're planning to relocate or whatever, to whatever country it may be, do your research. Uh, make sure you know the culture. Make sure you know the area, the weather, uh, the currency, and all those kinds of things. So obviously do your homework um, and just be more prepared. Just be very prepared for wherever you may be going. Um, whether it's here or whether it's somewhere in America, also again, just make sure that um, you know where you are, if that makes sense. Like for example, if you come to Ho Chi Minh City for your first time and you're in District 7 mm -hmm. and you don't have a SIM card and you don't have this and that and this, it's going to be quite difficult to move around. So make sure that you have SIM card sorted out right at the airport. Um, also, maybe support, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be friends or family or people that you meet. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I didn't do when I was traveling is I didn't make, uh, I didn't make friends, I didn't make contact with anyone else because I was just, it was my first time, so I was quite nervous. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people that travel, they, they would meet uh, wonderful people on, on the planes or on these excursions, and that's how you make uh, contacts. That's how you sort of outsource yourself and, and make connections. So that's, that's one thing that I would suggest uh, that they do. And then followed by three, um, just make sure you got all your documents together. Like if I come from whatever country, each country has a different rule and regulation. Mm. And, and like you said, last time you saw your passport was like... February. Oh, yeah, uh, that's, that's scary. Uh, so um, yeah, definitely preparation is key. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I 100% uh, I, I agree with you. And after doing recruiting for a while, uh, especially if you're coming from South Africa, uh, make sure you have all your uh, documents passports, uh, yeah. before no you come. Passports. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but it's not just the passport, but yeah. the, the consulates are, are limited yeah. in what they can provide. And uh, we, we have so our home affairs. Uh, just a quick, like, completely off the topic, um, uh, my parents are now over 60 mm -hmm. and uh, they are claiming a uh, pension, okay. but they needed their original uh, marriage certificate, which the Home Affairs can give to them. Mm -hmm. It's taken them three years and they still haven't. Wow. And every time they go back, uh, no one responds to them. So, um, yeah, if you come from a country like South Africa that struggles with those kinds of things, make sure you have your documents signed, sealed, dirt code, mm -hmm. whatever, stamped. Go to the judge and uh, you get, uh, what is it called? The, 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 the yeah. Yeah, yeah. So make sure you got all of that. It is expensive. Obviously, traveling abroad or, or living abroad mm -hmm. is very expensive. So make sure you've also got some, some spare cash or some extra money mm -hmm. because there will be times where you need an Airbnb or a plane gets delayed or something like that. So that's that's also a piece of advice that I would give them. I mean, it's pretty, pretty uh, common sense as well. That just make sure you have extra extra bit of money yeah. just for emergencies. Well, yeah, yeah. You always want to have that emergency fund. That, uh, Definitely. At least enough to for a ticket out, sure. kind of type thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, perfect. And so, in your four years, we, I know we talked about like the most amazing experiences. Yeah. You, you kind of touched on the the your favorite part of your journey, which turned out to be a professional part, almost yeah. like and very touching. Um, do you have a quote or something that you live by that helped you in your journey of moving abroad? Um, I must say, like, uh, this is the, uh, it's strange that you asked this question because um, there, there was one, but uh, I need to word it correctly before. Uh, um, but there's, there's many, like, um, you know, never give up. This is obviously the, the most straightforward one. Um, I'll have to think about this one because there is one that my dad always quoted to me, and it, it was from a. Um, uh, I'm not going to think of the name of the poet now, but. Uh, Anyway, um, so the one that I, I, I did live by for, for quite a while is, is that, uh, I'll never forget his name, his name was Uncle Graham, and he was a full-blown alcoholic, very talented human being, um, and he always used to say to me, you cannot slide uphill on your backside. Um, I'm, sure he, I'm sure he worded it, it, it much more sweetly, but pretty much at the end of the day, you, you have to put in hard work in order to see results. Okay. So, you know, you cannot slide uphill. You only oh. slide downhill, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to go uphill, you've got to use your legs and you've got to use your whole body and you've got to use um, your energy and uh, your physicality, I, I guess. 
So in the long run, pretty much boils down to um, put in the hard work, put in the hard efforts now, travel now, mm. don't don't delay, like don't don't wait until you're 30, 40 years old to, to do these things. Like do it now if you have the ability to do it. So yeah, I'd say work hard now and play later. Okay. Okay. Much, that, that's much what I live by. Yeah. Interesting. I, I like it. That's why you haven't traveled to all the different places. <laughs> well, there you go, man. <laughs> So it's the, the restaurant industry that, that got me that spot. <laughs> no worries, no worries. And then um, when you were making your plans to move overseas, were and like the initial spark. Now I know you talked about like some of the things in your country, but what was the the initial spark of I should move overseas? I should leave South Africa and go someplace else. What sparked that in your mind? What do you think? Um, so I would think that. Regret. Regret is, is a big one mm -hmm. uh, because I had an opportunity to uh, go to Scotland um, for rugby mm -hmm. when I was 18 and uh, I just never took the opportunity because uh, I was a big mommy's boy and I didn't want to leave her behind and it was a massive uh, family thing. I use that as an excuse now but I also realized that I was very scared. Uh, I, I could, At that stage I couldn't imagine myself being 18 years old on my own and figuring things out and traveling and like I think it was a very overwhelming feeling for me. Okay. Um, so what sparked um, me wanting to now follow through with that and see all these beautiful countries that we have in this world is um, the fact that uh, I have procrastinated and it's been something that I've been wanting to do and now I have the ability to and eventually I'll have the finances to and um, it's, it's definitely been something that's been on my mind that I've been wanting to take off. Okay. Um, so it is uh, definitely that and also um, just being uh, self-sufficient. Even though you know, I, I was, when I was in South Africa, I was, I was very much, I moved out of uh, my parents' house when I was 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. um, but I still felt like I relied on them a lot. And being here or being extremely far away, um, you're able to almost cut ties and now become an adult. Okay. So it made me more adult like. Okay. If, so, that, if that makes sense. So moving abroad helped you to grow yeah. up faster. Grow up. There you go. That's, yeah. that's exactly. Okay. And you're you're talking about family in this. Uh, I kind of want to go off the top of the yeah, show. And what do your friends and family back home think about your move? Um, so mixed mixed emotions because obviously half of the time that I've been here was COVID okay. and I think for all of us it wasn't the greatest time um, but after that it, it took me a while to recover because uh, I was working for a very dodgy company mm -hmm. um, we, we will not mention the name for, no. for certain reasons yeah. um, and uh, it took me a while to menti mentally get over that and just mentally get out of bed I was just uh, I was feeling quite depleted and depressed to be honest with you mm -hmm. and um, once I found a new job and found uh, like a new lease on life and met new people uh, it just sparked it sparked something in me again and um, I must say speaking to my, my friends they obviously know the worst part about it and they also know the best mm -hmm. um, and even through all the bad parts they're still happy that I'm here Again, they know that I'm, I'm safe. They know that um, I uh, have a, a great support system uh, mm. of people that I've met, uh, wonderful people that I've met. And um, I'm not saying that they're not in South Africa, but um, my family and friends are, are very much uh, happy that I'm here because if I wasn't here, I would still be in the, the bar industry, mm. which is just somewhere I didn't want to be. It was, it was a decision that I made to, to study it and go through with it, and I did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would probably never never use that degree again. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I, would, I would think um, happiness is the first word that comes uh, to mind about like, what my family and friends think. Obviously, they miss me. My mom misses, misses me. I haven't seen her in like five years. Mm -hmm. So, um, there's obviously that sort of homesick feeling, but, you know, a little video call or call here sometimes helps. Nah, man, so, you, gotta, you just got to tell them to get on a plane. I've tried. My mom's very stubborn, and she has to get a passport, and she has to try and get a passport now at age mm. 60, I think she's 63, uh -huh. uh, through the home affairs in Queenstown. Mm. It'll probably take 10 years for her to get a passport. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's not an exaggeration. So <laughs> um, we have thought about it, yeah. um, but uh, for now, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, we'll have to find a way 
around it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. So, I mean, that's good because you know one of the things that I found a lot of people struggle with um, is leaving their family yeah. behind, and then what are their family members and friends going to think when sure. you go to overseas? So, yeah, that's kind of one. Yeah, of mine were very, very supportive, uh, purely because I was at a point in my life where I was just. I was stuck and I was done and I was just like, I need something new. Mm. And uh, yeah, I approached him in the city because I had a friend here and just popped up. And I think within two weeks, because when I, when I do something, I do it very, very fast. Very, very fast. Yeah. And that's why I said I've learned how to try and prepare things a little bit better because mm-hmm. it does help. Um, and within two weeks, so I was here and yeah, that was it. All was history. Okay. Um, but yeah, also like if you do move to another country, make sure that you do have contacts. Mm. It is more helpful uh, because if you're wanting to study for a certain amount of time, it's helpful to know people that uh, can give you information on how to get uh, your visas and what visa you need, what schools you can teach at, what businesses you can open and those kinds of things. So like lots of little legislations that we don't really know. Yeah, you can Google it for sure. But it was nice to have uh, a support system in that specific country that is able to help you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and here I've seen. Cause I came here. I didn't have a support system. Yeah. I didn't know okay. anybody. Um, I just Googled it, everything, sure. and uh, I handled every, you know, did everything on my own. I prepared before, you know, applying for a job and, and everything. So I went through that process. I understand what you're talking about. Like, uh, it's uh, and and. You know, speaking with many South Africans here, mm. I know there's a bunch of us. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> Throw a rock, you'll hit a South African. There's for, there's for, uh, it's, it's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason. Um, it's purely because we, we need a way out and we need money, and it's, it's the best way to, to send money home as well, mm-hmm. especially for those of us that, that have family members that, that need to be looked after. So it's great to, to have that extra bit of cash and just send it home, mm-hmm. um, which is another thing that's helpful obviously then uh, I don't feel that guilty being away from my family because I'm able to, to help financially. So mm. yeah. oh, yeah. help. That is, that is. All right. Uh, so what I want to do next is I want you to uh, talk to the camera. It's, sure. it's yours. You can say whatever you want, your words of inspiration or motivation or whatever you want to share with the world or with my followers on YouTube and, right. and anyone else. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, um, the first thing that I have to do is just um, when you're over, when you're abroad and you're on your own, like like you said, because uh, uh, I pretty much um, the last two years also had to reconstruct my life on my own. Um, you are stronger than you think you are. Mm-hmm. That's that's one thing that I can tell anyone. Um, as soon as you start getting that fear of uh, what happens if I get lost, what happens if I get stuck, or I'm afraid of flying well, I'm afraid of this like put that aside because at the end of the day uh, the goal there's a there's a much bigger goal in life at the end of the day than being stuck in one place and this is coming from a small town boy um, that lived in this tiny little town that's absolutely horrible for 23 years and eventually I was forced to move out um, and then only seven years later did I move, move abroad. Mm. So again, it was that fear of leave, uh, leaving my family behind. It was a fear of not succeeding. It was a fear of going and then coming back within a couple of months because I didn't make it. So um, my sort of advice to you is stick it out. Uh, no matter what country you're in or wherever you may be, um, there are going to be tough times and there are going to be things that you frown upon and there are going to be things that make you feel uncomfortable. But that's just luck. Mm. Wherever you may be. For example, I love the weather, but a lot of people don't. Mm. Here in Vietnam, like I really enjoy the weather. I cannot think about going home right now and be in minus one degree weather. Um, and then again, um, embrace, embrace the journey. I would say embrace the cultures, embrace the people that you meet, and um, you know you learn a lot of things about yourself uh, once you're able to to be around different people and, and, and not not be judgmental. Uh, that's one thing that, uh, whilst I was speaking, a lot of times I was saying, uh, a lot of the Vietnamese people do this and that. In, in no way was I um, putting them in a box or anything like that. It's just uh, each culture has 
different things that we might not agree with or we might. But at the end of the day, I'm in their country, so therefore I'm going to abide by their rules. So that's that's another thing. Like, don't go to a country and think that you can be who you want to be and, and push your weight around. Like, respect respect their culture, respect the people, and um, yeah, just know that you are there for a reason. Uh, whether it be just traveling, um, you know, just be kind, be a nice person, and people will be drawn to you. They'll help you, and you'll 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 have the best times of your life. So that's pretty much um, what I've learned in the last two years. Be positive as well. Uh, there's going to be a lot of times where you're negative and your finances aren't great, or you didn't you weren't able to send a thousand dollars home because you had an accident, or in the cases. These things happen. It's going to happen at home. It's going to happen abroad. So either way, it's inevitable. It's yeah. going to happen. Um, another thing is, wherever you may be, always get coverage, medical aid. Mm. That's one thing I didn't do. So that's that's uh, another piece of advice: is wherever you are, you just get the some medical. kind of medical. Um, especially if you're in Asia, because of the driving. Well, not only the, not only the driving, but like the tropical diseases. Well, that that's that's. Been. I mean, I've had I've had dengue. Uh, I've uh, I recently just had an accident as well. As you know. Yeah, yeah. So I just came up with that. Um, you've got to experience those things, and and I promise you, even though having a broken leg is not the greatest thing, mm-hmm. uh, it taught me a lot of a lot of things, and uh, it um, it humbled me. I started getting a little bit. Um, arrogant and I was just sort of felt like I was just pushing my weight around and um, it humbled me a lot mm. so it's, it's made me come back down to earth and uh, realize where I am and that just like riding a bike you're going to treat people kindly you've got to treat the roads kindly and just yeah just be careful no, no, absolutely. So. All right, perfect. Mouthful, but that is, but that's. About it yeah, <laughs> that, that, it's good to express that and, yeah. and see it. For me, even you know, hearing you talk about that, it's a self-reflection. Like, sure. all right, I'm bringing this information in, and and you know, seeing how do I apply this to my life, and yeah. how do I do this, and, sure. and everything. So, okay. Well, I haven't, as I said, like, uh, I haven't really sat and deeply uh, thought about it until now, mm-hmm. um, which is a great thing. Because it's, it's also I'm, re- I'm reflecting on me and, and, and what I've been through and uh, you know there were days where I was like I hate the city and mm. I hate the noise and I hate this and I hate the heat and, and it, you have those moments and you're allowed to have those moments well I think even if you're at home you still have that's that a thing, thing it's too, again like, it's inevitable yeah. no matter where you are in the world yeah. your mentality is still going to stay the same yeah. but that's up to you so like um, yeah just Whatever country and treat those people with respect. Okay, okay. That's what I can say. Perfect. And uh, the last question is, you know, how can people get in touch with you and connect with you? If they see this and they're like, I like this, I want to talk to you, or they have opportunities to, to send your way, how can people get in touch with you? Well, uh, I'm not a very uh, technologically um, advanced human being, so I do have Facebook, okay. uh, and that's uh, Kirsten Macmillan. Uh, you'll probably be the only Kirsten Macmillan that you'll find because I have a female's name, mm. and it, it pops up K-U-R-S-T-E-N mm-hmm. um, and then yeah just uh, pop a follow and you're more than welcome to message or inbox me for anything um, I don't have much advice but uh, definitely have a lot of contacts regarding where to go where to eat uh, where to get bikes where to rent bikes from uh, what places to go to on weekends and things like that and you know like what markets to go to like anyone that's been here for four or five years mm. knows that information. So um, if anyone wants to move recently or has moved recently, uh, more than welcome to get hold of me on uh, yeah, Kirsten McMillan and uh, you should see this face <laughs> pop up and pop a, a little follow there and then I'll be on Messenger or on Facebook. Okay, perfect, yeah. perfect. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you very much, Christian, for coming Thank you so much. In. I really Good. appreciate it. It's a pleasure. It made me think uh, a lot more than I have been. And, uh, it's definitely widened my, my uh, expectations of, of, of wanting to travel more. Mm. And shown you kind of like having you do a self-reflection yeah. on your, yeah. your time. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm glad that you were able to get some value out of this, too. Thank you so much Good. for your questions, and I really appreciate your time as well. Thank you. Thank you. And if you like this content, hit the like button. If you want to see more, 
drop a comment telling me what you want to see, who you want to. If you want to be on the channel, uh, my email address is in the comments down below. Send me an email and I'll be more than happy to help you. Till the next time, stay safe, stay awesome, travel well, and peace.